Greetings, all burger kids. Uh, today we have a very special episode. As you can hear, I'm uh, speaking English. It's because uh, today we are starting kind of a mini series, uh, which will talk about the economic situation in Ukraine. Uh, we will have several guests. Uh, the first guest uh, is already here uh, with me. And uh, it's Oksana from the uh, IER uh, Institute uh, in Kiev, which uh, we know not only because uh, they are part of the uh, For Liberty Network and the Friedrich Namo Stiftung uh, community, but also because I have been reading their reports about the Ukrainian economy for the past uh, several months. They uh, produce uh, on a regular basis, uh, quite a, quite a comprehensive English information about the Ukrainian economy. So it was a very natural choice to choose uh, uh, this institute and uh, the think tank to talk about the Ukrainian economy. I've been talking for way too long <laughs> for the introduction. So uh, greetings again. And uh, before we start with uh, the economic stuff, with the numbers, with the business, Let's talk a bit about how is it to work as an institute, as a, as a think tank in Ukraine in these days. How does it look like? Uh, good, uh, good afternoon. I'm glad to, to talk here. Uh, and uh, a bit about who uh, am I and uh, where are you from? So we are an uh, institute uh, for economic research and policy consulting. Uh, this is, uh, I think, oldest uh, one of the oldest Ukrainian economic uh, um, economic or policy think tank, and we uh, work more than twenty more than twenty year in area of economic policy analysis, providing with uh, a recommendation. And recent uh, years, uh, we work with uh, civil society in Ukraine in order to develop the capacity. Uh, for increasing analytical capacity of Ukrainian uh, civil society in uh, in regions, because in principle, uh, civil society in Ukraine is very important driver of uh, reform, uh, which we uh, had uh, during the last uh, last decade. Uh, and uh, our uh, uh, we focused most on. Um, economic uh, in economic area we focused on production uh, of the producing the forecast uh, analysis of uh, uh, ukrainian economy from uh, macro uh, macro perspectives uh, also we conduct uh, a lot of survey and uh, i'm personally uh, a head of uh, Center for Contemporary Society Studies. Uh, this is a unit within our uh, institute, and we uh, work with uh, different survey or enterprise survey. It's not a citizen; it is an enterprise. Uh, uh, in order to get uh, from the first hand uh, information uh, about what is happening in uh, uh, enterprise level in Ukrainian economy, what is the prospect of Ukrainian uh, enterprise managers. And this is uh, creates some kind of the expectation and anticipation, and uh, it's allow us to uh, get understanding: uh, is it uh, things in economic policy uh, moving in the right uh, side or or in the wrong side? And also, it is important to collect information from the business uh, about the assessment of the business climate, of the regulatory environment, uh, and some kind of the feedback about the uh, reforms and measures. Uh, that government uh, undertaken in order to uh, improve uh, economic policy, not only economic policy, but policy, internal policy uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, after uh, the full-scale uh, Russian aggression uh, started in February 2022, uh, we a bit focus our um, uh, activities, uh, in particular, uh, uh, not only collecting and analyzing the situation uh, in Ukrainian economy, 
uh, because we uh, started to do it much more frequently. For example, uh, we conduct our enterprise survey on a monthly base before it was on a quarterly base. Uh, but also we put a lot of attention for uh, sharing uh, the uh, information about the state of uh, current state of Ukrainian economy, about the perspective, uh, different type of analysis. First of all, it is important for our government because uh, we need a different source to uh, assess what is what's happening here in economy because <clears throat> first months of uh, full-scale aggression, of course, a bit to destroy the system of collection statistical data. But also it is important to uh, inform a uh, different type of audience, first of all, within Ukraine and outside Ukraine of what is happening uh, in a country. So we have uh, a several uh, Facebook channel. We have uh, we are very active in a Twitter, uh, in a, a Telegram, uh, social network uh, in order to provide a different type of information about uh, uh, about what is happening uh, in Ukrainian economy, uh, economic policy, etc. And also we put a lot of uh, attention for uh, some special sectoral reform. For example, we before war and now we uh, work with the issue of the customs reform because it's an important uh, reform of the public finance uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and as I told, we work for a development and uh, civil society. And after war, it was some kind of um, challenge for us because the local civil society start to be very active like a voluntary helping Ukrainian population uh, which uh, uh, which impacted by war uh, and we together with our donors of course uh, refocused uh, our efforts on supporting not only analytical uh, initiatives or some analytical uh, capacity development of the civil society organization, but also providing uh, them a direct uh, help and support for uh, their uh, future and next helping uh, of uh, Ukrainian uh, of Ukrainian population, which uh, and coping some key needs. First of all, uh, for example. Uh, we work with the civil society organization uh, in uh, uh, local um, territory, territory communities, we call this it the Hromadas, uh, who uh, help uh, some refugees or in, in internally displaced persons within country, uh, for example, who must escape from uh, occupied territory and uh, moved in the western or central part of Ukraine. And uh, uh, these people need to be adopted in this local community. And uh, we together with our uh, sub uh, trying to uh, help them, trying to establish some kind of the dialogue between new this, uh, new people who came in, came in this community and, and the local, uh, local government. So it's a bit... Uh, challenge and the new activities for us, uh, adding to our uh, regular economic analysis uh, forecast uh, and uh, prov providing uh, some uh, advice for the government or for the, or for, for the local authorities. That's a quite lo a lot of activities. I, I noticed already on your website that uh, you have a very wide field of uh, what, what you do. How, how many people is your uh, institute? Uh, it's about 30, uh, 30 people, a uh, full-time employee, and uh, I think about uh, two, about up to five uh, who work with us on a uh, permanent base. So about 30, uh, 30 35 uh, employees, uh, because a lot of, uh, now a lot of efforts uh, we put on uh, the sub-granting activities, and it's like, uh, it's not research stuff, but it is important uh, people who help us with working with this uh, civil society society organization in, in the region, support them. Uh, when I was communicating with you, I was actually communicating with, I think, uh, four women and zero men. Is it something, is it an accident or is it really... Uh, can be seen also in institutes that men are being drafted and uh, cannot participate so much in the economic activity. Uh, no, uh, in principle, we are, we are women-oriented organization. It's, it's like a, it was a before war also. Our hit of the board is men. 
Uh, and we have, of course, my colleagues, uh, uh, we have a colleagues, uh, men, men uh, but uh, yes, uh, the, the men participate in economic activities within the country, but of course, uh, uh, a lot of, not, not a lot of, but there are, there are men who are mobilized. And for example, in our organization, uh, in November, we, uh, our, <clears throat> our, uh, uh, our heat of um, sub-granting department uh, was mobilized in the Ukrainian army. Uh, and... Uh, <clears throat> Now he is a servant, uh, so it's one 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 of the reason. Uh, and in others, uh, civil society or analytical think tank in Ukraine also uh, faced with with this issue. Uh, yes, the man uh, is uh, sometimes is mobilized, but uh, of course it's not not all men uh, are mobilized. Uh, and it's not uh, for for our uh, sectors. Uh, it's not it's not the issue. Uh, in principle, but yes, a lot of my colleagues uh, whom I know uh, start to be a member of Ukrainian army uh, in voluntary base. So they go to the uh, to the army and ask, I would like to be uh, mobilized. Uh, this is also important, uh, important uh, issue uh, for Ukrainian civil society when people which in past help to promote and uh, support reform. Uh, now they decided uh, by like a their personal example, uh, keeping uh, a follow following their uh, personal value, uh, and they uh, joined to Ukrainian army in order to uh, uh, support and uh, struggle for this uh, for this value. This is not only like a, in the paper in the words they they in in their head. That, that was kind of my clumsy bridge to my to our main topic uh, we want to discuss, and that's uh, how is doing business in Ukraine these days. Uh, I noticed some uh, some polls by MCM Ukraine, but also your uh, recent survey from uh, I think June or May, the last one, and uh, it seems that quite a decent uh, ratio of businesses continues operating in the Ukraine. Is it can, can it be said that majority of the businesses survive the first one and a half year of, of the major part of the conflict? Uh, I think yes, we can say that. Uh, also, but also we should take into account uh, we are talking about uh, the business which operate in a territory which controlled by Ukrainian government. Uh, because uh, we don't know, and unfortunately, a lot of business are destroyed in those twenty uh, about about twenty a bit more than twenty percent of Ukrainian territory, in, including Crimea, which are, are occupied by Russia. Of course, the business uh, there uh, are destroyed, uh, but the business which operated in uh, control uh, in uh, uh, area which controlled by Ukrainian government, uh, almost all after the first shock. Uh, a lot of them, uh, or almost all, uh, st uh, uh, continue, continue their work. For example, based on our uh, survey, we uh, we survey about uh, 500 plus uh, industrial companies uh, uh, every month, and we ask them a question: uh, Could you uh, could you uh, share with us uh, with us information about the amount of their activity today? Uh, comparing to those to those what was before war before February 24 2022 uh, and uh, now uh, it's a st stable uh, uh, percent only three percent of uh, from our sample uh, said that uh, they are uh, stop uh, working and uh, they did not uh, continue uh, about uh, the 60 percent of the company are working at full or almost full capacity meaning more than 75 plus capacity comparing that it was before uh full-scale aggression started so most of uh, part most all ukrainian businesses are uh, adopted and uh, keep working but uh, but uh, does it count or is it valid for the whole uh, economy or is it mainly the bigger industries which are incorporated or can it be said also about the self-employed and very small businesses uh, artisan businesses and so on do, do, do are they able to continue as well uh yes uh in principle uh, in principle it is true for uh 
medium, uh, small, and even a micro businesses. Uh, but when we're talking about micro businesses, we should take into account that uh, this is, in principle, solo entrepreneur. And uh, some uh, of these um, people um, can, uh, can go outside of country, for example, like uh, refugees. Uh, so uh, here it's uh, and they they feel and they they felt some decrease in uh, in demand. Uh, so uh, we can uh, I I cannot data because there, there are no new data. But we we have a new registration of uh, small macro 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 entrepreneur. Uh, but uh, I don't say that. Um, um, uh, I don't know, say how many uh, people who in past was wo an entrepreneur uh, went out of Ukraine. Uh, I think some so, so, some of them are among uh, among those eight million uh, refugees which are now outside of uh, Ukraine. Uh, but in principle, uh, their condition is the same like uh, for big company. Uh, so big company has much more opportunities to uh, uh, restart and uh, uh, their activities. Uh, but uh, small business, like a uh, uh, very small business, like uh, uh, selling the uh, some food, selling the coffee, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, they feel in principle very good. It's uh, uh, some kind of attribute uh, of uh, even. Even if uh, if you will go to Kharkiv, which are very close to the front line, and uh, uh, it is uh, very a, a lot of uh, Russian attack, uh, where in uh, in past, uh, but uh, the cafe and restaurant, uh, which are usually like a small business uh, operation, are open in in Kharkiv. So it's some kind of uh, uh, good uh, a good signal. Uh, that the food, uh, which are food associated with the small businesses, uh, are in a good condition. Uh, in in a good condition uh, in Ukraine, of course, there are some of the company and uh, and small business which cannot uh, operate, especially if you're talking about uh, the region which are very close or in 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 a fire line. I can remember the uh, the well-known coffee shop in uh, Bakhmut, which was. Uh, working almost uh, until the the very last day, so uh, so it's very very inspiring. But um, maybe maybe can you can you describe how how does it look like in terms of uh, availability of business services? Of I, I don't want to go much into detail about, for example, electricity or general logistics or, or rail because we will talk about this with, with your uh, other colleague. But uh, maybe if you're a businessman and you need uh, a lorry transport or you need to order something, uh, let's say from the from the European Union or you want to use post, are all these services working generally okay or are, are there big differences? services uh, the all all services all life uh, uh, is uh, wor working like a, like in a normal time uh, of course for example if you're talking about the transportation uh, via sea it, it, uh, it doesn't work because the seaport is blocked and uh, uh, during russian uh, during uh, last day we see like uh, uh, russia destroyed uh, our port infrastructure and our grain terminals uh, in um, in Odessa uh, uh, and um, in Pivdena Ukrainsk and uh, in, in, in southern uh, part of the Odessa Oblast. Uh, so you cannot, any trans transportation via sea is blocked, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but if you need, uh, for example, if you're talking about the business which work uh, uh, in the regional, local levels, so the uh, logistic is, uh, in principle, is established. But uh, it, it, when we look through for uh, the list of impediment for doing business based on opinion of our respondent, uh, the logistical problem uh, is among uh, three top problem of doing business in Ukraine. Because yes, uh, if your partners or your storages are in the left bridge of the Dnieper, for example, in some Poltava regions, and uh, you need to transfer uh, to, uh, transport something to Western Ukraine. Uh, so there are some kind of not a deficit, but 
there are some kind of the uh, of of the issue taking into account the um, number of bridge uh, across the Dnieper, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you uh, if we are going if we are talking about the transportation and if we are talking about the uh, export or import uh, outside of Ukraine, uh, so in this um, uh, in this case. Uh, of course, there are some kind of the lines and some kind of the stock of stock of uh, companies that are uh, would like to export something and uh, and the capacity uh, not only our border but also capacity of our uh, border uh, of our friends from the border countries from the EU Union are limited, and uh, this is one of the reason why of line. It's, it's it's there are some kind of the stock uh, in the border. For example, if you would like to export something. Now I'm not uh, talking about uh, some uh, blocking of Ukrainian uh, export grain from the Poland and uh, etc. This is, I think a dif different part of the story. Uh, but if you are talking about another uh, export of another goods, uh, uh, yes, there are some kind of. Uh, it's not impediment, but uh, if you're a businessman, you you should to take into account that you need to much more resources uh, in terms of cost and times in order to uh, cross uh, cross the border board due to this physical limitation of Western board because this is now only one way when a Ukrainian business can uh, sell their uh, products or buy uh, something uh, outside and bring into Ukraine. There are only a, a, only a Western board, no no fly. Uh, and no sea connection. Unfortunately, not only Poland is blocking the grain, but also Slovakia, despite the uh, record growing food prices, it seems that uh, the farming lobby is just uh, very, very strong in all, all these countries or European countries. So anyway, maybe maybe one, one more question about the daily, daily functioning. Uh, how does it work uh, with uh, safety, uh, especially when we are talking about, let's say, some industrial uh, companies where there is some uh, risk of uh, possibility being attacked? Uh, are there any regulations how they should build shelters to, to make some drills? Or is it more a bottom-up approach that every company tries to find their own best way how to behave in case there is imminent or even if uh, if an attack happens on the on the facility? Yeah, this, uh, this thank you. This very good question uh, because of security issue. It's one of the important uh, important issue for business for any business climate, and of course, it's important issue uh, now for Ukraine. Uh, again, uh, according to our survey in our enterprise survey, the uh, problems of uh, security uh, now it's in a six position out of uh, fourteen, which we have in the list. Uh, it's uh, a bit less position, but uh, the uh, number of uh, respondents which said that this is uh, this is a problem uh, about uh, um, it's about the 40, uh, 30, 40, uh, uh, it's 31, 31 percent uh, in in June in 42 uh, in it was in in May. Uh, it's less than, for example, we had in the winter when uh, it was a very serious uh, attack for Ukrainian uh, infrastructure. Uh, but nevertheless, it's quite uh, quite high because, uh, I, for example, I personally expect that the number of this uh, uh, of the people who said that this is a problem will decrease. But unfortunately, uh, no. Uh, there, uh, there are, uh, of course, there are some kind of um, requirement which uh, work for all people in Ukraine. For example, if we uh, hear the uh, air, uh, rate of air alarm, uh, we need to go to shelter. Uh, but of course, the problem uh, and the, the, if you have shelter around of you and some shelter which are good uh, property uh, and good quality, this is an issue because, uh, of course, nobody, <laughs> nobody would prepare to such kind of the war. Uh, and the, the best shelter is the metro station, of course, uh, in a big city. 
uh, and uh, when we are talking about small and medium business, so they, uh, in principle, such kind of facility, there are, they, they have not any special uh, shelter. They used uh, all shelter which used another citizen. Uh, big companies uh, uh, which used uh, for facilities uh, of the uh, Soviet uh, big Soviet factories, which uh, some of them in past built, uh, taking into account some kind of uh, nuclear uh, nuclear attack. Uh, so that facility, of course, much more much more better. But uh, anyway, uh, if uh, there are your facilities under attack, the only uh, anti uh, anti missiles weapon uh, which Ukraine. Uh, received now from our Western partner uh, will uh, help uh, and will um, will make the situation much more secure uh, because, uh, for example, we try to do some kind of some some kind of the exercise. We put uh, in uh, in a chart the uh, number of uh, missiles attack. Uh, which we had in uh, since um, September last year, and the uh, number of respondents in our survey, which said that it is uh, uh, unsecure, it, it is unsecure work in, in their area. And we see some kind of the correlation uh, when uh, increase when the number of uh, rocket attack increased uh, before May. Uh, we uh, also uh, observed increased the next month the, the share of the respondents that say okay the security is the issue uh, and then after may when ukraine uh, received uh, a patriot uh, weapons uh maybe we received this early but in may it started to work uh and uh, we all, all of us uh, saw the result that a uh, result good for us and uh, not good for uh, our enemy uh, this tendency is stopped so now um, the company felt or felt much more secure at least uh, based before i cannot say every time when when we start to to um, say about the correlation and relation between security uh, and economic uh, and business climate or uh, economic well-being Every time before or next day, the Russian starts do something much more terrible uh, than it was before. So I don't know what uh, how will uh, how the uh, recent uh, attack to the Odessa and uh, the port and the grain uh, uh, and grain ca capacity will impact for um, opinion of the business in Ukraine this month. I don't know, uh, but I hope uh, uh, the. It is in totally, uh, totally the security uh, will not, uh, the feeling of security will not change. And also it is important to say that uh, it is very big difference between the regions. Of course, there are some uh, kind of the regions where are uh, very hard reachable for a Russian uh, Russians weapon, or, or maybe they do not use uh, the proper weapons. And these regions are uh, felt much more uh, and perceived much more secure. And uh, the business optimism in that regions much more uh, much more high. So we're talking about the regions which lie uh, in, in the west uh, in the western part of the country near the border. Uh, was there a big shift uh, inside Ukraine of the economic activity? Maybe, maybe companies from uh, Zaporozhye or or the eastern part moving their production to the western part. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it is true when we're talking about micro, small, and partly medium, but almost of all micro, small businesses, because they very. If you provide some kind of the services, you can provide the services in another city, in another regions. If if you produce something not very big, you can put your equipment and uh, send, for example, to Western regions, and then. Uh, ask for help because there are some special program of Ukrainian uh, government to help for uh, removing uh, the uh, capacity and you can uh, you, you can you can do you, you can still produce what you want but uh, of course when you're talking about a large company with a, a large capacity so they uh, are they are not they, they cannot be moved 
uh, and of course this company need uh, in a, a closing so like a closing sky uh, in much more secure uh, weapons which will secure this uh, facility uh, uh, plans uh, of these companies uh, from uh, the mass Ru Russian Russian rocket attack yeah yeah sure it's difficult to move a steel maker uh, yeah. from one place to another mm -hmm. uh, and maybe can you can you see a difference between uh, uh, international companies and Ukrainian owned? My my hypothesis is uh, that uh, being a part of of a global company uh, gives you a lot of help fr from the mother uh, to to your local. So can can you see the difference, for example, in terms of financial health or or generally uh, attractiveness to employees or or ability to keep production between Ukrainian owned and international companies? Um, in principle, uh, yes, the company which uh, have their uh, mother's headquarters outside of Ukraine, uh, in principle, they um, had much more uh, because they operate their business in Ukraine is a part of much more global uh, uh, global business, uh, much more the global plan and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Of course, they have uh, had have much more opportunities. Uh, uh, for example, to um, first of all uh, to keep uh, their staff to help uh, their personnel. So I know the example of um, uh, of uh, of uh, Ukrainian one of the biggest Ukrainian steel uh, producers, which in uh, foreign ownership, uh, they help uh, their employee uh, to remove uh, investment part of the country or uh, uh, or send their family outside of the country because any. Uh, any moving, it is it is costly. Uh, one issue when you go it by yourself, uh, like refugees, and uh, another issue when somebody help you to uh, move and to adopt in in a new place. Uh, first of all, it's increased uh, lo loyalty uh, of employee for these uh, companies when you when they felt, especially in the first months of the war, such kind of the support. And uh, theoretical and practical is a company with the uh, foreign capital uh, or, or with foreign, uh, foreign ownership. Uh, they had much more uh, much more opportunities than uh, Ukrainian owned uh, company uh, and uh, this is that is why that uh, the um, original Ukrainian uh, business uh, should be like they it was some kind of the interview and some uh, of the uh, manager told me that we, we we need to be 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 much more strong because behind of us only only we nobody uh no nobody else is behind of us so uh, uh that is why that in this uh, case the ukrainian uh business need uh, some kind of uh, they need to be much more stronger uh and maybe in this case uh despite of even the market economy uh rules but uh despite of these rules uh the ukrainian uh, such kind of the business needs some kind of uh, state uh, state support or, or be because uh, uh, they of course have the less resource and a lot of resource but it is true for ukrainian and foreign owned business in ukraine a lot of resource the company uh, spent not only for the economic activities but also on uh, donation on support, uh, volunteer and humanitarian uh, aid and activities uh, within country. It is it is true for both for Ukrainian and for foreign companies. But uh, yes, uh, I think uh, this foreign uh, company which has some kind of uh, headquarter outside of the country, uh, at least they have much more opportunities to uh, recover rebuild uh the um, if the if the owner will will make such kind of the de decision keep business in ukraine by the way it's very important when foreign companies keep a decision uh, make a decision to keep business in the country it's very uh, good uh, and encourage a signal for another business uh, in ukraine so it's we applaud for such kind of the decision but they have much more uh, opportunities to be stronger than uh, on th than uh, pure Ukrainian owned company. It's according to my personal opinion. That actually quite connects to my last by but uh, complex question, uh, and it's about the trajectory and and, and the future. Uh, 
first half of the question is how would you say the the business environment was doing before the the full scale war uh, because uh, I, i remember our ex prime minister mikulash durinda our ex prime finance minister ivan mikulash uh, being very active in ukraine so we had kind of a quite lot of information and it, and it seemed that uh, uh, the ukrainian uh, competitiveness is doing uh, quite okay in the let's say since 2014 Uh, I also remember personally, I, I was in Kyiv in 2007 and then again 2017, and uh, I believe there was a big difference in the in the past, in the 10, 10 years. So uh, my personal feeling is that the country was doing quite okay in terms of uh, economic development. So how to get back on the track, of course, counting that the, the hostilities end and, and the war, war is reasonably victorious for, for Ukraine. Uh, what is needed to be done to attract the businesses uh, back, to attract new investment, uh, maybe to start more exploration of, of natural resources, just to kickstart the country after the war. Um, I think, uh, yeah, you're, uh, you're completely right that before war, uh, the economic development, in, in pre- despite of different, uh, different moments, the economic development was uh, pretty good. Uh, there was conducted a lot of uh, a lot of reform and some of them were successful first of all when we're talking about the reform of the debt internalization which uh, allowed the local author- uh, authorities receive some kind of the resource for development of this territory uh in the local level uh it is some kind of relation between uh, business uh, in terms of people and and business who Uh, first of all, small and medium uh, who operate in 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 this territory, and uh, it was quite uh, quite successful uh, reform. And I think it's one of, of one of the issue why uh, in Ukraine before war, in principle, economic situation was uh, quite good. Also, Ukraine uh, where uh, the country dependent from the export and the steel metal steel and uh, agri- agriculture for grain and agricultural products was the main product of our uh, export before war uh, so it was some kind of uh, important uh, important uh, tendency or track of of our development uh, and uh, now what is the main uh, in principle uh, in principle the business activity is quite is quite high and the business try to adopt it to the situation the main issue of this situation is uncertainty if uh, it is important uh, you should know what will happening for example in three months in a, in a six months in a two year in order to build some kind of the strat- plan or the strategy uh, of for development of your business and when you do not have such kind of the information Uh, it is uh, it means the level of uncertainty is quite high and uh, in uh, in economic theory the uncertainty the high uncertainty the uh, some kind of in the, in the high uncertainty we observed uh, some kind of stagnation of economic development but here in ukraine we uh, observed the uncertainty in different perspective in a short in a Uh, in a long term perspective uh, and uh, we see that um, uh, that now for two uh, for two month for two year perspective more than 50% uh, of our respondents say, uh, cannot say anything about what uh, other they will uh, grow or they will decrease their activities uh, but at the same time uh, only four per- only five percent said they okay we will decrease our activity and uh, 22 said they we will increase uh, we don't know what will happen but nevertheless we will grow interest uh, now some kind of the waking positions they say we will keep what what is what, what we have now uh, but it doesn't mean but this is uh, some kind of issue um, for long-term development but uh, if they do not know what will happen in in two years because uh, every month uh, we understand more and more that this is for is not uh is not a sprint we, we understood this last year but now we uh, uh realize that this is some kind of very long marathon uh and uh, we should prepare it. and now uh, and business even in this situation in a short run perspective Uh, nevertheless they try to do what what they want to do now like uh, uh, produce and sell produce and sell and this is a good for some kind of uh, industries for example 
food industries, uh, for example, uh, textile, uh, textile industries, but it is not good for some industries which, uh, which take some kind of the long term investment. For example, when your uh, production cycle about a two uh, of uh, some pro pro production production is a two year, uh, for example, in the machinery building, uh, civic machinery building, uh, so you cannot do any. Uh, you have any uh, prospect, you cannot have any ideas what will happen in, in, in a two year. And maybe you will uh, awaiting uh, what, what, will, what will happening uh, now. Uh, so first of all, uh, it's, uh, our economic perspective, uh, business need to um, give, uh, to receive some kind of certainty. Uh, for example, uh, and I understand that it is not uh, real in, in the situation which we, uh, which we have now. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, we need a certainty. We need a clear uh, understanding what is next, next, next. Okay, we will have a word five years, for example, six years, and let's be prepared. Uh, and another issue, uh, this is a security, of course, which we discussed before. Uh, we need uh, some kind of this, have some kind of the umbrella uh, for key facilities, uh, for key industrial facilities uh, in order to uh, secure from uh, them from the physical uh, destruction uh, by the uh, uh, Russian records. It's, uh, it's in key importance. And uh, also uh, important issue, it's about uh, people. Uh, because uh, now the time of uh, for people for refugees uh, thinking about their future, uh, because it can you, you can spend a, a broad year or two maybe a year and a half or two year, but then you should make immediately decision what what would be next, uh, and if they will return to Ukraine, so here should be created a job uh, for them. Uh, and also again security. Uh, so the people should uh, uh, should uh, felt uh, feel uh, security by them, uh, sec uh, secure themselves, uh, their children. Uh, so uh, here it also should be uh, any uh, certainty. Uh, and this um, in this situation. Uh, it will uh, give us in when uh, during the war because nobody knows when the when uh, victory will. Uh, will come to us uh, and uh, it will help us to um, survive and uh, even development during uh, during a war because if there are no security no nobody will uh, build here or rebuild here the uh, destroyed capacity for example uh, but some of some of the capacity must to do, must to be uh, rebuilt for example if you're talking about the uh, energy uh, capacity and another capacity which an infrastructure which uh, support uh, our daily life uh, of, of, of the people mm, so the mm -hmm. uh, security uh, uh, will attract uh, uh, will attract the people uh, i think will attract people to be back uh, and of course, uh, another issue, some kind of uh, mm, uh, zero tolerance to corruption, uh, some kind of improvement in the business climate, I mean, uh, some some very friendly for the uh, entrepreneur uh, tax regime, it's also very, very important <clears throat> in order to, uh, in order to develop, keep, 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 keep doing business. Uh, and I think uh, together, uh, uh, all together, it will uh, help us to survive and uh, develop after the victory. I believe I, I'm personally was pretty surprised by the by the resilience uh, showed uh, the numbers. Uh, also, your institute uh, publishes. We will talk more uh, about the micro data GDP uh, and fiscal status in uh, one of the next recordings. So uh, until then, I, I'm was it was great talking to you. Uh, hope uh, we will soon be able to talk about the reconstruction and uh, uh, the opportunities that um, Ukraine can offer. Uh, I, I always remember that the example of Poland, which I don't know, 25 years ago. Okay, it was not after war, of course, but 25 years ago, it was it was a country. It was. Uh, people were kind of joking about them, you know, especially in the West, all these cheap uh, Polish laborers, 
today it's I think the sixth biggest economy in uh, in the European Union, and they are like really really a powerhouse. And I believe this can be also the example of, of Ukraine in the future because uh, the resources, the the abilities, and maybe even the the war experience, which really like toughens people, toughens businesses, makes them more resilient, more focused. Uh, at the at the end, in few years, it it can be an asset for the future development. So until then. Hope everything goes uh, great from now and uh, looking forward for next updates uh, and uh, reports from your institute. Yes, I think I think also we will uh, we, we are strong and uh, all will be victory will be and all will be okay. <laughs>